This is the last lecture in the series of bitwise operators in C. Now what we will study in this lecture? We are going to talk about bitwise XOR operator. We will see one example related to bitwise XOR operator to help cement the concept. Apart from that, we will also consider one homework problem related to XOR operator. Now let's try to understand what is bitwise XOR operator. But before understanding the concept of XOR operator in details, we first try to understand what is inclusive OR operator. Because this is the best way to understand the concept of XOR operator. According to inclusive OR operator, when either A is 1 or B is 1 or both are 1, then the output is 1. Suppose A and B are representing one bit of information. Then either A is 1 or B is 1. Output is simply 1. But when both of them are 1, then also the output is 1. Isn't this truth table looks like a truth table for OR operator? That is what we need to know. OR operator and inclusive OR operator both are one and the same thing. Inclusive OR operator is the second name of OR operator. Now let's try to understand the concept of exclusive OR operator. Here in this case, when either A is 1 or B is 1, then the output is 1. There is no problem. But when both A and B are 1, then the output is 0. Please note down this point. That is why it is called exclusive OR operator. Because it is excluding the both combination. That is, when both bits are 1, then the output is 0 and not 1. Now this operator is called inclusive OR operator because it is including the both combination. That is, when both bits are 1, then the output is 1. This is the only difference we need to note down. Apart from that, XOR get its name from exclusive OR, taking X from here and OR from here. Okay, now let's consider one example to better understand the concept of bitwise XOR operator. Here in this example, we have two values 7 and 4 and their 4 bits binary representations. When we are having both bits as 1, then the output would be 0. Or when both bits are 0, then also the output is 0. Otherwise, the output is simply 1. Right? Therefore, the final output is 0, 0, 1, 1, which is equal to 3 in decimal representation. Therefore, 7 XOR 4 is equal to 3. Now let's consider one homework problem. What is the output of the following program snippet? Here, value of A is 4 and value of B is 3. In the first line, we are performing XOR between A and B and storing its result in A. After that, we are performing XOR between A and B again and storing its result in B. And then finally, we are performing XOR between A and B again and storing its result again in A. And finally, with the help of this printf function, we are trying to print after XOR A is equals to percentile D and B is equals to percentile D. As these are the placeholders, they are getting replaced by the values of the variables A and B finally. So here we are trying to print the values of A and B. Now what is the output of this program? It is the homework question and you need to understand this problem on your own. It is a very simple problem. On the other hand, the concept behind this problem is very, very important. Try to evaluate the concept on your own. Please don't take help of the compiler. Purpose of this homework problem is not only to produce the output of the program, but also to understand the concept behind the problem. You can always post your answer in the comment section below. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture.